It's time to get real. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest sitcom moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the most troubling, disturbing, or emotionally impactful scenes from TV sitcoms that dealt with unusually serious content. Number 10, Jackie Reveals Abuse, Roseanne. I told you I'm okay. You come over here, your back is all bruised up, you won't tell me nothing about it. How do I know if you didn't get raped or mugged or something? Some sitcoms have been seen by fans as handling heavy subject matter with too light of a tone. This is not the case with Roseanne, as evidenced by this powerful pair of episodes from the show's fifth season. He told me a million times when he gets in a mood like that that I should just walk away, and I didn't. I just kept pushing him and pushing him. Don't say any more. Crime and Punishment and War and Peace follow Aunt Jackie's experience with domestic abuse, and the narrative doesn't shy away from confronting the subject head on. There's nothing awkward or cheesy about Jackie's painful description of the incident, nor how it affects those around her as they search for a solution. How, how could you do something that stupid and immature for me? <laughs> Number nine, Stephanie's friend, Full House. Y you know what helps? Try thinking of a funny movie like, like Home Alone or Roger Rabbit. That's what I always do when I'm getting it. Getting what? Well, you know, when your dad's pounding you. Just as Roseanne is known for its realism, Full House was conversely memorable for its family-friendly attitude. This sixth season episode bucks that trend in a scene where Stephanie's friend Charles mistakenly lets slip that his father beats him when he's angry. My dad never hits me. Does yours hit you? No, just, just, just forget it. Let, let's do the assignment. The scene gets doubly dramatic when Charles mentions Steph swearing on her mother's life that she won't tell only to be told that her mother is dead. I don't care if you swear on your mother's life. My mother is not alive. The pair actually share this fact in common, but it doesn't make the sequence any less awkward or troubling, especially for a sitcom so tied to its lighthearted tone. But if you know this is happening and you don't say anything about it, you're only helping it happen again. But what will happen to Charles if we report it? What'll happen to Charles if we don't? Number eight, goodbye, John. Eight simple rules. Rory, will you please not keep your shoes on the stairs? Those are dads. Okay. John Ritter's large comedic presence on the sitcom Eight Simple Rules was one of the reasons the show was so well received during its initial run in 2002. However, when the iconic actor died from aortic dissection a year later, the show dealt with the grieving process head on with a pair of episodes both titled Goodbye. They'd say, well, what do you know about mommies and daddies? And we would say, they always come back. Unless they collapse in aisle three of the stupid grocery store. There are barely any laughs to be had as Ritter's character is written out of the show, and his family is forced to confront life without him by their side. It's honestly difficult to watch even now, yet it's also a strong reminder of just how much Ritter affected those around him with his talent and presence. Whether it's a you're an idiot, what a geek, or an I hate you, and I love you isn't far behind. And it's the knowledge that my wife and kids love me that makes it safe for me to wear pajamas and black socks to the breakfast table. Number seven, camp counselor confrontation, Mr. Belvedere. Well, maybe you'll be with me tomorrow. I think I'm gonna be in Miss Pritchard's group from now on. The 80s sitcom Mr. Belvedere may not be as well remembered as some others on this list, but fans who did watch all seem to remember this troubling episode from the series fourth season. The counselor. He might try to do something. Put his hands on him or something. Well, what do you mean, honey? Why do you say that? Because that's what he did to me. Here, young Wesley Owens wonders what to do and who to tell when a camp counselor attempts to molest him during a moment when the pair are alone after a swim. Episodes of Mr. Belvedere usually ended with the title character writing in his diary, but the counselor instead featured a character-breaking moment addressing the audience about who to contact in the event of a real-life situation like this one. No one should ever touch you in a way that makes you feel bad. 
And if they do, tell someone you trust, like your mom or your dad. Number six, drunk driving tragedy, growing pains. Carol, don't worry, I'm gonna be okay. My car, on the other hand, that's who you should worry about. <laughs> this very special episode of Growing Pains is something of an ultra-tragic bait-and-switch. Second Chance dealt with the dangers of drunk driving when Carol's college-age boyfriend Sandy, played by future friend star Matthew Perry, is in a major car accident. To tell you the truth, I don't feel so hot. I got so many tubes and wires in me. I get HBO now. Sandy speaks to Carol at the hospital, and we're led to believe that he'll eventually pull through, only to be informed later that the young man dies from his injuries off screen. He said that. What is it, Mike? Carol Sandy just died. Sandy never receives his titular second chance, and we're forced to directly view Carol's grief as she embraces her family after receiving the news. Number five. Uncomfortable Uncle, Family Ties. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> family Ties is probably best remembered for providing a breakout role for Michael J. Fox as young Republican Alex P. Keaton. But the sitcom also featured its fair share of dark episodes. He hugged me real tight. He's a warm person. And then he patted me on the behind. It doesn't mean anything. Ball players do it all the time. <laughs> I'd understand if I just hit a home run. Fans may remember Speed Trap, which dealt with Alex's dependence on uppers to study for an important exam. I blew it. Speed is like that, Alex. It'll keep you up for a while, but when you crash, uh, you crash hard. But this first season moment is even more disturbing. Give Your Uncle Arthur a Kiss follows Mallory Keaton as a trusted family friend, makes a pass at her when no one is looking. No hard feelings? No hard feelings. <laughs> 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 the episode tries to balance comedy with this ultra-dark material, and the combination makes it cringy viewing, especially by today's standards. Stephen Arthur trying to seduce our daughter! <laughs> we'll be right back. Number four, Will's father, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It was great seeing you, son. You too, Lou. All of the episodes on this list can be emotionally effective, but this moment from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air may be one of the most well-acted. I've been waiting for this for a long time, my whole life, and ain't nobody gonna stop me. Come tomorrow, I'm out of here. Oh yeah, I don't think so. Who cares what you think? You are not my father! Will Smith delivers an incredibly strong performance in this scene when his deadbeat father leaves him for the second time. Although Will was at first elated at the prospect of his dad coming back into his life, this happiness then turns to disappointment, anger, and profound grief as he lets out all of his emotions during an epic monologue. Mm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a damn card. To hell with him! The final embrace with Uncle Phil makes this already tearful moment all the more poignant. How come he don't want me, man? Number three, the horrors of war, MASH. There's something wrong with it. It stopped making noise. It just, <laughs> just stopped. The final episode of MASH was a television landmark full of dark and memorable moments, but this one remains shocking to this day. Hawkeye Pierce is forced to recall a traumatic event while being held in a psychiatric hospital, one that occurred while Pierce and a group of wounded refugees were hiding in a bus from enemy fire. He tearfully processes a moment where he angrily yelled at a woman to quiet her crying baby, only to react in shocked horror when the woman actually smothers the child. She, she killed it. She killed it. Hawkeye's tears, anger, and frustration are palpable as the audience is taken through his stages of grief, resulting in an utterly heart-wrenching scene. It was, it was a baby! She, she smothered her own baby! Number two, The Bicycle Man, Different Strokes. What's the old saying? You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You keep coming up with these presents, you can scratch me all over. <laughs> Different Strokes is somewhat infamous for the amount of taboo topics covered during its eight-year run. Die Hard fans may remember the creepy sexual assault vibe of The Hitchhikers, but every sitcom aficionado is familiar with The Bicycle Man, 
a two-part episode dealing with child molestation. Maybe it would be best if you didn't even mention, you know, that you came back here and I gave you all this ice cream before dinner. Why don't we just make it our little secret? Huh? Arnold Jackson and his friend Dudley are lured, step by step, into the twisted world of their local bike shop owner, Mr. Horton. The young boys are given ice cream and comics at first, but then are shown X-rated cartoons and encouraged to take photos without their shirts. Now we're gonna uh, take some pictures and we're gonna have another little sip of wine and we're gonna take some more pictures. And, uh, so uh, give me a strike a pose for me there. Yeah, let's see, let's see what you do. It's profoundly creepy and horrible, yet delivered in a realistic and incredibly dark way. Don't say we didn't warn you. He tried to, he tried to touch me. It's not your fault, son. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some powerful honorable mentions. We talked about the stalker and I told her he only attacked adults. Now, I guess she thinks he's after me. Come on. As far as I'm concerned, this disease has one thing going for it. It's killing all the right people. I'm a gene. I'm terribly sorry. I'm going to have to ask you to move your car. Why? Because you're leaving. What are you talking about? Number one, Edith Bunker is assaulted. All in the family. Oh, sure. Come on in. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. But you know, they say women got to be very careful these days with the robbers and the burglars. Oh, no, I can't be too cautious. Norman Lear's All in the Family was a pioneering dramatic comedy series. And nowhere is that more controversially showcased than in this two-part eighth season episode. Edith's 50th birthday was one of the first sitcom episodes to deal with a subject as strong as sexual assault, as Edith Bunker is nearly raped at gunpoint by a criminal who makes his way into the Bunker house, disguised as a policeman. Okay, now. Now, you don't make any trouble, and everything's gonna be just fine, you understand? I I'll give you anything you want. I got some money upstairs, eight dollars, or I could give you a check. The audience reacts with nervous laughter as Edith panics and attempts to talk her way out of the assault with some jokes. I'd hate to have to use it. I hate to have you have to, too. <laughs> this makes the scene even more difficult to watch as it switches back and forth between awkward humor and brutal realism. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.